Hello, everyone. Welcome to this episode of The Kim Jacobs Show. Yes, we have the lovely Chinsia Rogers here on The Kim Jacobs Show today. How are you, Chinsia? I'm great. Hello, everyone. So excited to have you. So excited. We're going to have a great episode. So listen, everyone, go ahead and grab your virtual seats. Invite people. Chinsia, you also share with your friends and family. And we're going to go ahead and get this episode started so we can have a great action-packed information Field time today here on the Kim Jacobs Show. So welcome everyone to today's episode. We're talking with serial entrepreneur Chinsia Rogers. All hello, right. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> so- Hi, I'm Kim Jacobs, the Balance Doctor. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of the Kim Jacobs Show. Be sure to subscribe to the Kim Jacobs Show right on YouTube. Turn on your notification bell to all so you never miss a beat. And guess what? Every time you watch, you're going to receive a real relevant and relatable guest that's going to share with you a piece of the puzzle on this journey called life that will help you be able to manage just a little bit smoother. At the end of the day, the Kim Jacobs Show goal is to be able to provide balance to the world one household at a time. All right, everyone. Yes, it's the Kim Jacobs Show, and we are here today with Shinsia Rogers. I love that name. It's very beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful. Very glad to have you. So listen, we're going to, I'm going to formally introduce you, and then we're going to get a chance to deep dive into your life, your story, and you can take us on a journey into Shinsia, okay? (laughs) Gaston County is great for small businesses. According to a recent survey by Wallet wallet hub that had Gastonia coming in at number 85 in the country, ranking higher on the list than Myrtle Beach, Concord, and even Huntersville. So it's like up there. Wow. That Gaston County is up there. A local Charlotte couple, Chinsia and Miko Rogers, couldn't agree more. They have purchased several businesses in the Gastonia, North Carolina area as a way to support their community with jobs and build generational wealth for young black families. And I'm going to give you the honor as we go through today's discussion to talk about your businesses in more detail. Welcome serial entrepreneur, Chinsia Rogers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so let's talk and tell us, uh, have you always been this serial entrepreneur spirit? Take us back into your childhood and your life. Yes. Where did it all begin? for <laughs> Um, It's so funny you said that about childhood. Um, I was thinking the other day when I was very, very young, I want to say probably around eight or nine years old, um, that spirit you know, kind of came out on me. My, Mm -hmm. it started first. It's a funny story. My grandfather used to work at an assisted living facility. Um, At that facility, he used to get a lot of free stuff. Um, (laughs) And I'm sorry, my dogs, I have. Oh, you know what? This is the, I'm the balance doctor. And this is (laughs) a show focusing on balancing and managing different aspects of your life. You can put your dog in your lap and you're totally good on this show. I can't (laughs) mute them. I'm like, please don't bark. But, Don't even try it. Let okay. them bark. They want. They like, girl, you on you on the show. I want in. What's your dog's <laughs> name? Live, real life here. So, What's your dog's name? Um, Cam. I had a little Yorkie mix named Cam. There's Coco and Hazel. They're free French freelance bulldogs, and then I have a newest one, Chase, and he's a Labradoodle. So oh, all kinds of different personalities. The Labradoodle, I love. We had a Labradoodle for 13 years. Oh, wow. And I loved her Labradoodle so much because yeah. she would give us five if we asked for it. Just yeah. brilliant. Brilliant. He's, oh, he's such a little handsome guy, but he's the newest. He's the youngest. So most, you hear some, that's him whining and barking. The other one, He wants in. He's like, give me, you know, I'm supposed to be your baby. So I cannot believe you're excluding me from this whole interview. My, my assistant, Shannon, that does our production backstage, mm-hmm. she has her dog watch the show, like literally in front of the TV. Rocky is like oh, this. Wow. Like I'm watching the Kim Jacobs show. <laughs> I wouldn't have makeup on because they're going to keep licking me. I'm like, wait a second, wait a second. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, so tell us your entrepreneur spirit. Yeah, so my grandfather used to bring home a lot of free items because a lot of the seniors there would just give him stuff. Right. Um, one of the things they would give him was cigarettes. Um, so big boxes of cigarettes and everything. And so when you say, you know, where did that spirit come from? Like I would go inside of their drawers and see these cartons of cigarettes. And so little old Chintia would then, you know, go to the corner store and see. <laughs> well, back then I think cigarettes maybe was, I don't know, $3 or something like that. I'm telling my age, but I'm like, my grandfather doesn't smoke. Those carton of cigarettes are sitting there. I can sell cigarettes. So, so wait, wait, as a as like an eight, 10 year old, well, how old were yes, you? Eight? Eight, eight, eight. Oh my goodness. And so it's really bad. So I, I grew up in Washington, DC. So, um, you know, going to the corner store when you're that age is completely normal. But my grandmother was very involved in my life and I used to stay with her a lot. And so this particular day, I decided to go to the corner store and I took a couple of uh, a carton of cigarettes. And so I would see, you know, the guys like sitting along the road and they would be sitting in their chairs smoking. And so I come along and I'm like, you want to buy these cigarettes? Oh, my and God. Now, I cannot even envision this little teeny child coming up saying, hey, you want don't worry about what the Surgeon General said. You want some of this? I got packs for you. <laughs> there is already smoking. I'm laid back in my chair already. <laughs> Actually, speaking of which, today is National High Five Day. And thank you so much, Michelle, for sharing those national holidays. Today is National High Five. Give a high five. I want some <laughs> high fives today throughout today's episode. Okay, so you're an eight-year-old child talking to the grown folk. And please don't tell me, please don't tell me that they actually took you up on your offer. Yes. They, the guys, they gave me 10 bucks for a carton of cigarettes. And so <laughs> that's child, that me, might be child abuse for real. I, I mean, I know, no, no, that could be that. That's a problem. I don't know what kind of hotline there is for that. Do not buy cigarettes. Let me put my views express. <laughs> Where is that phone? <laughs> Lord have mercy. I got to put this. I don't usually put this right on the screen, but give me a second, Chinsia, okay. because I, I have to pop this on the actual screen today. Okay, here, wait, 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 everybody. Just the views expressed by the guests on the Kim Jacobs show do not always reflect that of the show, okay, including what I'm saying today, because what I'm saying, Kim Jacobs, not the show. Yes. No grown folk need to be buying no cigarettes from no eight-year-old no, child. Now, y'all know better them. than that. Shame on them. Shame <laughs> on them. <laughs> Come on, tell us more. So I'm like, oh man, now I have money to go to the store. <laughs> so he had, I think my grandfather was in a dresser drawer and it was completely packed with cartons of cigarettes because he used to smoke and then he stopped. And so one day I got caught. So <laughs> this day me and my grandfather and my grandmother walk into the store and my grandmother, she would always chat with the guys because they lived in that area. <laughs> and she and he goes, does your granddaughter have any of those cigarettes? <laughs> I know your grandma and granddad were like, what? My grandmother's the type of woman that she would always pretend she knew something was happening, even though she didn't. I knew those cigarettes were missing. <laughs> Yeah, I'm telling you, all of Gastonia area. Is that was was this in Gastonia? No, this was in Washington D.C. Washington, yeah, you said Washington D.C. You were growing up, mm -hmm. yo, man. Okay, listen, all y'all from the old neighborhood, Ray Ray and all the boys, yes. and everybody <laughs> sitting in front of Seven Eleven on the porch. Y'all know goodness well, y'all. And look at what kind of part of history you done put into Chinsia. <laughs> so now you're an eight year old buying some cigarettes from an eight year old child, and then you gonna ask the grandparents, does she have she have any? Now y'all know that if, you know she was doing that on the down low at eight years old. I, I know. But now I'm in trouble, <laughs> and my business is shut down. <laughs> oh, <laughs> this right here making my chest palpitate. I'm serious. I, gotta, I, I did not expect this. So everybody that's watching the Kim Jacobs show know that I don't always know in advance what the guests are going to say prior to them coming here on the show. We're having this discussion, so I can't fake. 
I can't fake. It's like when I hear somebody say that when they were eight years old, they're selling cigarettes yes. to a community <laughs> of people. And then they're really like asking, hey, hey, you got my cigarettes? Yes. <laughs> what? <laughs> that can't be. <laughs> that can't be. Okay, get us past that part of the story because I'm going to keep it. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be like that. So from then, I, at that same age, I used to, then I'm like, okay, well, the cigarette thing isn't for me. Um, I would go and buy boxes of those little oatmeal cookies and have um, bake sales. Anyone that grew up with me, they know that this story is absolutely true. Um, I used to set up a bake sale between my grandmother's house and my aunt's house. And I would pull out the cookies and I'm like, okay, this, this costs a dollar. I can sell these for 25 cents and I can make X amount of money. Um, and then it kind of just, from there, it didn't kind of blossom until later on in life um, when I mostly kind of worked jobs that were on straight commission. And the thought process behind that is if if I'm responsible for my pay, this is like my own business other than having the structure set right. up. Like, so I'm not eating unless I'm feeding myself. Um, and the first job I ever had that told me that, they're like, oh, well, you, you know, this is how much money you can make. And, um, if you don't make, if you don't sell anything, you don't make any money, you know? And that thought was like, okay, so I stay here for eight hours. And if I don't make that, if I don't sell anything that I, I don't make any money, it didn't even sound legal, um, but it wasn't. <laughs> it sounded like back in the day when you walking in that neighborhood, right? Right. <laughs> this adult version. Now it's like, what? So what now I, I have to sell everything I sell in order for me to ever even have yeah. something to eat. Absolutely. So it was in a retail store and it was complete, you know, straight commission. I worked there part time. Um, I always knew a desk job wasn't for me. I knew that very, very probably when I was 14. Um, okay. and, I worked in, you know, working in DC, I had a lot of family members who were in the government. So it was easy to get a, a government job. And I knew that very early on that I could not sit at a desk. That was right. Me. So I was always looking to move around and do things that was more adventurous and that I had control over the bottom line. You know, I didn't, right. want, I didn't want to know, okay, every other week or every week, this is all I was getting. I want mm -hmm. the ability to make it's more standing. or do more. Right. Yes. Good. Um, so that's when, you know, that job, it was, it was risky, but it wasn't because I did have that stable full-time job in place. Mm -hmm. And the more that I worked, I worked there, <clears throat> And it was a very, very popular retail store. Um, and I worked there maybe four hours after I left my full time job. So I worked seven days a week. The only time I had off was when I actually called out, which was very hardly ever. Wow. And I worked seven days a week. And at my commission job, I was the number one seller. I can imagine. So, You're like, y'all don't, don't, you can't touch you this. Can't. Like how MC Hammer say, like, no, <laughs> you can't be able to touch this because the skills I, I come to the table gonna, with go oh back to when God. I was eight. <laughs> yes. I mean, I'm not going to waste my entire day and bring home nothing. Um, from that store, I was then recruited to one of the major retail chains um, to work on their designer floor. Again, same pay scale. You don't sell you don't get paid. And as a matter of fact, at this place, you you owe us money <laughs> if you don't oh make any money. Oh my goodness, that's going we'll too still, far. We'll still pay you, but this is a loan. And so it kind of just, I just, it kept getting riskier and riskier, you know, because oh now this God. is my full-time job. And if I don't sell, and this was a new environment, you know, where you do have to have a client base. It's a client based business. Most of the people that come there, they're not just walking in. They, they shop there. They spend chunks of money at a time. on right. what So it was new for me because I'm in a, you know, smaller, a big retail chain, but a smaller scale. People do walk in and spend money. This mm -hmm. place, you have to develop like a relationship in order and trust with the customers to spend. You know, I mean, they're they're buying cars with their wardrobes, you know, and right. like it was nothing. So it was, it was a great challenge. I loved it because um, I was the youngest one on that floor. Most of the women in that store were older, seasoned, had been working there for 20 years. What does, what does, what does age matter when it comes to you? You could have been eight working there, you know? <laughs> Who cares? 
cares? It's like, what? So what? I'm the youngest. Do you know what my skills consist of? Yes. I've been selling <laughs> cigarettes since I was eight. <laughs> I've been selling the pinwheels and all kind of oatmeal pies. Yes, you, you I can't can do it. nothing that's gonna happen with the sales that I bring to the table. I wow! Can do it. So it was, it it was. I love working there. Um, it was, you know, hard initially because of you know just working with older women, and they say this new buck, you know, come up and start to bring all the customers her way because you yeah. know you got fresh you know, fresh eyes and, and different looks and different ideas and making people feel really good about themselves just because I was the youngest. Um, and so from there, I'm like, listen, I've always said to myself and as, as well as my aunt, because she's also worked in a lot of commission. Like if you could, you can work on commission. Um, you can run your own business. Okay, stop right there before you start talking to us about the businesses that you're yes. going to run. Because I want to give everyone that's coming into the studio audience a chance to chime in. Listen, mm -hmm. if you guys want to actually come onto the screen, let me put that here for you so you'll know how you can come right in and talk to Chinsia head to head. I love when people pop in. So use this link, pop mm -hmm. in and Say, hey, Chinsia, you want to send a <laughs> shout out? You want to say something or ask a direct question? We're talking with serial entrepreneur Chinsia Rogers today. I see you, June Griffith, in the studio audience. Good morning, all the way from Brooklyn, New York. Hey, Kim and Chinsia. Hey. <laughs> and now listen, type where you're visiting in from so I can pop your name on here and, and send a quick shout out to you. I'll pull it up on the screen. Sharon LaFlora, how are you? Good morning to you. And she said, good morning, sunshine. Good I'm sure talking to you over there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anybody else? Michelle Stoner is on. She said, hey. Hey, Michelle. All right. Listen, more people are chatting from Pittsburgh. Okay. She's from the Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania area. So I'm glad to see that all over people chime into the Kim Jacobs show. And we're glad to have you all visiting from wherever you're visiting. Make sure you put a five at some point in today's episode in the comments, because today is national high five, give a high five day. So make sure you take a moment to do that as well. Hey ladies. Hey, 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 Michelle, glad to have you. Glad to have you. So today we're going to be also taking a moment to introduce, oh, someone had a question. If you, oh, this is a comment. If you can work on commission, you can own your own business. That's a quote from Chinsia yes. Rogers. And, <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, this is good. I'm glad that you put that, uh, Shannon. That's a great quote. So some of the quotes that you'll hear from Chinsia today, we'll actually pop those into the comment section. Right now, we're going to take a quick commercial break. And I want to make sure that you know this particular attorney office, they're located in the Charlotte area and they're also located in the South Carolina area. It's Snow Legal Law Firm. And they, when attorney Kenneth D. Snow comes on, he does a legal moment and he asks, answers any questions that people have within like a 15 minute period of time. You can get that consultation. But then he's also agreed that people that say that they watch the Kim Jacobs show, feel free to call their office and let them know that you heard about them on the Kim Jacobs show. And we'll give you all of their information and let them know that. And they will answer one of your con consultative questions regarding, it can be a mot motorcycle accident, a bicycle accident, any kind of accident that you may have experienced. And you're not sure of how to even go about dealing with this. Reach out to Snow Legal and let them know that the Kim Jacobs show sent you their way. Here's a commercial name. I'm attorney Kenneth D. Snow. And at the Snow Legal Group, justice is our job. For more than 20 years, attorney Snow has been fighting for justice and winning cases in the Carolinas by providing aggressive representation in criminal defense, domestic violence, family law, serious injury, and wrongful death. If you've been injured or lost a loved one in an accident, including tractor trailer or ride chair, you need the Snow Legal Group by your side. Fighting for justice and fighting for you. Visit SnowLegal.com. Call 70 for a free virtual consultation located at 6827 Fairview Road, Suite D in South Park. All right. And we are back. And again, today's episode is sponsored by Snow Legal Group, snowlegal.com. Their phone number is 704-358-0026. And you can also email them at info at snowlegal.com. All right, Chancia. Did everyone get a chance to tag a friend and invite someone else into the studio? If you haven't done that, make sure you take a moment to do that now. And I'll give you just a second so that you'll know exactly how to do that. Let me tell you something that you can do to stay connected with the Kim Jacobs show <laughs> while we give you that few moments. Hello, 
everyone. I'm Kim Jacobs, host of The Kim Jacobs Show, where we're bringing balance to the world one household at a time. Listen, we go live every weekday, Monday through Friday at 11 o'clock a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I bring guests on that talk about their backstories, things that they've had to overcome to become who they are today. Many of them are balancing and juggling life, and they've become experts in different fields. So they're sharing tips with you to make your life just a little bit easier. Many times as a guest in the studio audience, you'll get a chance to walk away with a missing piece of the puzzle that might be missing in your life. Let's go on this journey together, and I look forward to seeing you Monday through Friday at 11 o'clock a.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on The Kim Jacobs Show. And we are back with Chinsia Rogers, literally serial entrepreneur since she was eight years old. So <laughs> if you missed that part of the story, make sure you go back and check out the beginning. And that's why we've been laughing so hard, because literally at eight years old, she started her entrepreneurial journey. I see you and welcome you, Kimberly Fallis. And she says, hey, ladies. Hey. hey. Thank All you. right. All right. So glad to keep on keeping your comments coming in throughout today's broadcast and we'll pop them up on the screen. So Chensia, tell us some more things like what are some of the businesses that you actually own now? So right now, uh, my husband and I have a bail bonding company in Gastonia on 321. It's Rogers Bail Bonding. Nice. We also have a podcast studio on Main Street literally like walking distance from our bonding office called we talk podcast studio <laughs> yeah um we have a real estate company um it's called mc mz real estate named after our it's our children's initials and um that we don't technically have an office for it's just you know every year we you know we'll flip houses and invest in real estate and then um, most latest venture is a hemp warehouse in um, Gastonia off of airline. Um, well, actually not the latest. The most recent is the mini market that's actually attached to the hemp warehouse. So it's an indoor farm. And then in front of that, um, December, we purchased a convenience store. Now, see, you never left your roots. See what I'm saying? No, I'm back at the convenience store. You back at that <laughs> convenience store, and now you took it to a whole different level. You got some hemp, and you you like, look, forget the cigarettes. We know no, we got her. We got you. We got you for real. <laughs> so this, this is real you, stuff. <laughs> so you covered. You covered. Okay. So all of your different businesses. Where can people learn more about the different businesses that you own now? Well, they're all they're. Well, right now, I there's websites for each business individually. Just okay, here I'm gonna put some of them. I don't know. I, I know that we have this one. I want to pop them on so people can know exactly where to go yes. to learn more about yes. each of them. So I see here that we have info at and say what it is. Yep, High Living. Okay. Com. Yep. Info at High Living dot com and www dot h i e L I V I N G dot com. I have podcast listeners too. So I want to make sure that the iHeart Ready Radio people and everyone get a chance to hear this as well. Okay. So that's highliving.com. And then you also have the Bell Bonding, Bell yeah. Bondsman. Mm -hmm. What's the information for that one? That is Rogers, R O D G E R S, Bell Bonding.com. And then what's the other one as well? It's We Talk Podcast Studio. Someone type that one. I just typed the Rogers Bell Bonding. So if someone can type the We Talk Studio. We Talk, we talk Podcast. podcast. Studio. Mm -hmm. We Talk Podcasts Studio. Studio. Yes. Dot com. Yes. Okay. So RogersBellBonding.com. And that's located in the Gastonia area. Yeah. Owned by serial entrepreneur Chancia and her husband Miko Rogers. Yes. And so do you service people only in the Gastonia area or anywhere? Anywhere in North Carolina. So in North Carolina, when you're licensed, you the we could go to any county in um in the state of North Carolina. 
So Excellent. Yeah, that's so our you, home county, but we we go anywhere. Mecklenburg, Lincolnton, Asheville, like anywhere in North Carolina we can service. So people that would come to you for the bail bonding are people that are having some criminal issues or court issues or what? Tell us, tell us about this particular business, the Rogers bail bonding. So basically when you, when someone gets arrested, um, they normally would get a bond where the magistrate would set, you know, a dollar amount and say, Hey, this is how much you have to pay for your freedom. So the defendant or their family member can then go pay, say, just to put a number out there, say you get a thousand dollar bond for a traffic ticket. Um, so you'll get booked and arrested and they say this, you, we set a thousand dollar bond. You have an option to go to the, the courthouse or the jail and pay the thousand dollars and then you walk out or you can hire bondsmen and pay a percentage of that thousand dollars. And then we kind of, we write a check and we take responsibility. So we're on the hook to make sure that you see your case through. Okay. So the, Basically, it's between 10 to 15 percent that we can charge. That's the max of the thousand dollars. So that's why most people hire bondsmen, especially a thousand dollars is a really small bond. Right. Um, some of them are much higher than that, and they really can't afford to pay the court that, or they may not have collateral to put up to get out. So they hire us to basically almost be like a babysitter and pay a smaller amount and have their freedom until their court case is over. Wow, that is just that's admirable. You and your husband own this, and then you employ you employ local community members. Yes, absolutely. Um, we're family owned and operated. Um, we also have other, we have employees that work for us, and we just recently hired a young lady. Um, so we're all about making sure that we give back. Um, we've done a lot of like giveaways and book bags and food in the community. We absolutely love Gastonia. Um, as much as it's like, oh, we're in the South, it reminds me of a small town because where I grew up in DC, it was like a small town. You right. know, you walk around and get to people and people knew you, told on you, you know, <laughs> so I'm just, um, right. but it's, it, it reminded me of that. And I've very early on when we opened an office there, I just had a vision. I'm like, you know, this, this is going to be it. You know, Charlotte is, I love Charlotte. Um, it's of course, it's saturated. It's a lot of people that are from everywhere. Right. Charlotte, but I love the close knit community in Gastonia. Um, it just helps when it, when you're not from here, you can have conversations with people. Um, there's a lot of um, trust when it comes to building a business. Um, it's people want to know who you are. That's right. what I out in being here. It's not so much of what you have, how much money you have and all of mm -hmm. those things. It's, you know, do I trust you? Do I like you? You know? And I felt like in a smaller community, you know, you, you can touch people and you can make a difference. Um, Good. And, you know, a larger city where people just, you're just another number. I love it. I love the concept behind your your thought process to entrepreneurship. I really love that. And you said we talk podcast. Is that what we talk podcast studio singular, right? Yes. Okay. Let me um put that up as well. Let's talk about that and tell us more about your we talk podcast studio.com. Yes. Yeah, so this is right on Main Street in Gastonia. It's a co-working building. Initially the thought of the podcast studio, the inspiration was with me had I had a, a podcast some time ago and I used to rent spaces in Charlotte and with that it was just like such a hassle it's like oh I got to get there on time I got an hour to get all my thoughts out and if I run over you know too bad try it again because you you only have an hour to make this work because then someone else is coming right in I also found that the spaces were very kind of sterile you know when we would have guests they would, you know, you're sitting in this hard chair, you're not comfortable, you may be having a conversation about something that's uncomfortable, and <laughs> you're sitting up straight and you're nervous and all this stuff. And I, I'm i like, there needs to be a space that's like more cozy, just like I am right now, just right. Home, right. you know, chilling and talking. And if you look online, you'll see that that's definitely the space that was created you know there's you know a couch there's chairs it, it's more of like a home environment so when people come in and they're just they'll stay for hours like they'll book it for eight hours and 
record for a whole month um, just because of the environment. It's just so cozy. I think what what you're around and your surroundings and your environment makes a difference with everything. I think so too, big time. Makes a huge difference. So people can rent this space out from yes. you. Okay. Yes, they can rent by the hour, um, or they can. It's we do like an hour, an hour and a half increments. And the thought behind that also was because if you're recording for an hour, you may need an hour and a half. Right. To set up, take to set up, and then have time to breathe and then start recording. Um, just being in it. You know, some people, until you're in something, you don't realize the flaws or how things can work and can be changed to make it easier. And that was one of the things I'm like, when people book for an hour, if they have an hour podcast, unless, they, unless they're right there, ready to go and record, this not it's not going to work. You know, they're going to run over, which doesn't help me or the next person coming in. So right. Um, being in that situation, let let me help tailor the business where it, it works good for the clients and customers. Wow. This is entrepreneur Chinsia Rogers, and she has taken us on a journey of some entrepreneurship since she was eight years old and then never stopped after that. And all the way to right now where her and her husband are owning multiple businesses right in the Gastonia, North Carolina area. And so ownership is something that she does well, and she's excited <laughs> to be able to share that journey with us today. The question I'll ask you next, and I'll give you a quick break to think about it as well, is what tips would you share with people that are considering entrepreneurship? Some people say entrepreneurship is not for me. And they're like, just put me in a job. I don't care about our business ownership or any of that. So when we come back from this break, I'd like for you to tell us what your suggestion is for people that are just starting out that really do have a vision to succeed at the level that you've succeeded. Okay. All right. All right. So listen, everybody, we just talked with Chancia Rogers about her studio. If you're interested in actually taking her up on that offer, you can reach out to her at wetalkpodcaststudio.com. They rent it by the hours. Plush is fun. It's inviting. And it's an area for you to be able to come in and do what you need to do. Block a little bit extra time just so you will be able to have some front end time and back end time cushioned in, in addition to your interview time. But let me also let you guys know that I offer a four and uh, let's see, I was going to, I'm going to do this right here. I'll tell you all, all of the details, but I offer a four and an eight week masterclass. And during those classes, you're able to learn how to officially start your own show from scratch. So if you've ever wanted to start a podcast or to start a talk <laughs> show, I've had a show on PBS and it lasted for three different seasons. And also on the Word Network, I've been the expert for the NBC show, the Charlotte Today show for multiple years been out to do balance makeovers for families that are looking to figure out how do we have more synergy, harmony, and all of these things that we're trying to manage around here. Guess what? I put that into an eight week course and you can work in your own pace to be able to start your own show from scratch. Nice. And then there are people that I have as clients and they're like, I don't want to start my show, but I do want to know how to improve my presentation skills online. You can go right to kimjacobsconsulting.com and learn more. And we'll take a quick commercial break to show you how. And we're going to come right back with Chinsia Rogers right here on the Kim Jacobs show. So everybody sit tight. Hey everyone, I'm Kim Jacobs and I'm so excited to go on this journey with you. You and I are going to have a great time as you go through this course on how to create your own online show from scratch everything that you need to know from A to Z, everything that I know anyway, I'm going to pour it into you. We're going to have a great time talking about what should your show even be called? Who's going to be your guest? How do you identify your target audience? How do you be able to get your studio audience engaged? What type of lighting should you use? All kinds of things we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about the different platforms that you should use. We're going on this journey together, so go ahead and grab your virtual seats and let's get ready to rock and roll and have a great experience as you learn how to create your own online show from scratch. All right, everyone, we are back with Chinsia Rogers. And Chinsia, go ahead and talk to us from your perspective on some tips that you would share with people that are trying to start this journey. Absolutely. I would say my first tip would be to find something that you're passionate about. Um, that is what's going to carry you into waking up every day, you know, working all night on the weekends, um, 
to make it work. Um, so many people will see other, you know, people on Instagram, Facebook that are successful at right. businesses and they think, you know, I can do that. It's not that simple. Um, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> that works for Kim, you know. No, please. That, that works, works for Chintia. Chintia. <laughs> but that's not your passion. So you're, you'll find yourself frustrated when you're trying to mimic what someone else is good at. And when that's not really what you do. Um, I'm always a huge advocate, like my friends and family, like, like sometimes you can't even see yourself. There may be something that you're passionate about or really good at, and you don't even notice it. Um, and someone else can say, like, I have a really good friend of mine very early on. I told her, I'm like, you're really, really good at decorating. You should start like event planning and doing all this. Right. Like, oh, you sure? No, no, you know, and like fast forward to this day, she's doing that full time. So Good. it's just one of those things you have to find something that you're passionate about. Um, try to block out what other people are doing um, because that is going to drive you and, and create the energy you need to make it work. Um, Cause otherwise you'll find yourself frustrated. It's like, Oh, that didn't work for me. And then you'll, you'll give up. Right. And it's easy to give up. So you want to yes. find something that you're passionate about. Yes. But like you say, something that you actually mentioned is something that I talk about in my book, Extreme Balance Makeover. If people don't have that, make sure you go to KimJacobsShow.com and get a copy of it. But in here, I'm talking about how you can actually identify what I call the 333 exercise. And what mm. that is, is checking with three of your friends mm. to find out what they think that you're gifted at doing. That's and awesome. then <laughs> identifying what you think you're gifted at doing three of those things and then kind of force ranking them because your friends are going to tell you the truth. They're going to say, don't do that. Cause that is not you. Don't do yes. that. <laughs> don't high five. Your- Remember today is national <laughs> high five day. Yes. Don't do that. <laughs> when did you learn how to do nails? It's like, no, I know, not- bumpy. <laughs> Like, no, you know, your friends, but that's just what I said. Like your friends will know, especially like the friend that I'm talking about in particular, I've known her since she was 14. Right. So I've seen like, like even for me and, you know, it's, it's crazy as it is, it is with just selling a cigarette. It's like, I can look at that and say, okay, this is, and look where I am today, even though right. it's just a small, you know, a start and it was completely illegal. It's still just, I can't believe we're talking no. about this. <laughs> but it's such a good story. So you no, have to no. tie it's a part of your story, right? It is. It is. And it's something I'll never ever forget. And I've shared it with my friends and, and my husband and everything. It's it was hilarious. I didn't get a whooping for it. I did get yelled at though. So. I'm surprised that you could have had that. What if your grandparents would have been like, girl, you making that money for this house? They could have <laughs> started going and saying, here, go ahead. But instead, they steered you to the oatmeal pies. They like, sweetheart, you can still sell, but you just need to stop selling cigarettes at eight and just start selling some something edible. Maybe not. They didn't know you were going to go down the road to where you are now. They didn't they, they know that either. They like, Lord, this one, this girl, she's I was it. already thinking back then, like, what is going to happen when I run out? <laughs> But you didn't get the chance to because somebody blew your cover. Shut it down. Shut it down. <laughs> okay. The point is now you're a serial entrepreneur yeah. that helped you get grounded to become who you are today in a great way. And, and it just kind of helped build your character is what we're going to say. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> All right. So talk to us about your high living.com. Talk to us about that. So that's an indoor. So I've always been a huge, like, health advocate, health and wellness, love plants, love gardens. I have gardens at home. I had um, a few at my kids' schools. I've sponsored gardens. Um, Love to, you know, just eat clean, um, grow your own vegetables, showing my kids where the food we eat, where it comes from. It just doesn't pop up in the grocery store. Right. Um, You know, it comes from somewhere. So all of that kind of led to looking into, um, the plant, which is the hemp plant, is the cousin of the marijuana plant. It, you know, some of has very small traces of THC, but not it's it's all completely legal. Um, fast forward to the commission um, base. I worked at after retail. I went into the cosmetic industry, so I used to do consulting for um, cosmetic services like Botox, Restylane, 
um, liposuction, things like that. So I would meet with women who were interested in, you know, enhancing their appearance. And again, commission, very hardcore commission environment where, you know, you, you were only as good as your last month, which is how business works. And, um, in that I've, I've learned so much about, you know, ingredients and things and selling products. So when I merged the whole health and wellness with the plant and knowing how great it is to add to the cosmetics that we already use. Um, that's more what I focused on. Not so much of the smoking and all of that stuff, because it, even though I sold cigarettes at eight, I never smoked before. So I've never. <laughs> that's important to note. Yes. So you never got caught up in smoking no. yourself. It was just, you were just doing a job. It was just a job. Look. Wow. <laughs> it was just a job. So I've I've always viewed the CBD and the hemp plant from a cosmetic perspective. And most of like 90% of the products that I formulate are cosmetic driven. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's that's pretty impressive. Yeah. so, So like I had a chemist and a scientist on my show recently and they talked about the benefits Yes. Uh, CBD and different mm-hmm. things. Do you have anything that you want to share as some of the benefits from your perspective as well? Absolutely. So the benefits from a cosmetic standpoint, so we are always looking for, you know, women of color. We, are, we have issues with hyperpigmentation, inflammation, um, also hormonal issues, which is something that you could take that's ingestible, you know, PCOS, all of those things. So this hemp oil helps with discomfort. Um, So women that are dealing with cramps and um, discomfort, like arthritis in their knees and arms, we have cause like topicals that you can rub on. Uh, As far as the skin goes, like hyperpigmentation, CBD is a natural anti-inflammatory. So if you rub it on the skin um, and people that have like psoriasis and eczema, all Mm -hmm. of those things, or mosquito bites, you get an instant relief. Um, very different from when you're using cortisone and other topicals. Um, I've used it on every, like we, my kids keep it here. Like they ask for mom, where's the cream? Like they, we, we don't buy any over the counter medications or topicals anymore. Cause it literally is an instant relief. Well, help us. I mean, and any, y'all, y'all in the studio audience. So I hope you guys will stop and ask some, start typing some questions. Yes. I'm not just sitting here asking questions by myself. Okay. <laughs> so if you have a question about high living or CBD or hemp or any of that, type the questions yourself or bail bonding or any of the businesses that Chinsi is on here talking about. Type your questions too. But one of my questions is why is it, and I can only speak from personal experience. Okay. Mm-hmm. I have, and I've already, I mean, there's a couple of things. I'm trying to be very careful because <laughs> I, yes, I see you tapping your head, Shannon, in the backstage. Shannon's like, no, Kim, don't say, no. I'm not allowed to say certain words <laughs> okay. because I grew up in the projects, right? Okay. And, and well, I, this is where I grew up and, and anything that had those leaves and stuff, yes. I'm <laughs> trying not to say the word, right? I'm not going to yes. say the word because Shannon told me not to. <laughs> Cassandra, all of them said, Kim, whatever you do, when you have somebody on the show talking about CBD, do not say the R word or the W word or certain things I can't say. But I was like, or the joint, I can't say certain things. I can't say certain things because they say it's a problem. It's not professional. So I'm doing my best, but it's like, how can I have this discussion without saying this? What about people that are ignorant Okay. To the situation like I am. I can only speak for myself. Okay. When I think of CBD or anything that, that has to do with hemp and stuff and rubbing it on my skin, I may be in the most severe pain ever. But the way that I think and tell me how to change this, okay. the way that I think is like I'm rubbing uh, stuff into my... <laughs> I didn't say that. Jensia, you said I don't have the rules. You have it. Okay. So if you say it, then I'm off the hook, right? Yes. Because I can't say it. They don't, they won't allow me. We're going to have a team meeting, emergency team meeting if I say it. So for people like me mm-hmm. yes. that, don't, that I'm ignorant to this topic, 
can you please educate me? Am I rubbing something into my skin that mm -hmm. to me crosses the blood brain barrier mm -hmm. in some regard? Mm -hmm. Now it's in my system and I mm -hmm. can't get it out. And then I get something happens and they like, oh no, she got mar <laughs> marijuana in her system. And I'm like, no, I don't. I don't even smoke. I don't, I don't roll it. I don't do anything. Now yeah. it's because I rubbed it on my back, which is really hurting, actually. Speaking okay. of which, the COVID shot, I'll tell y'all about that another day. But okay, I still would do it again. But that right there, I need that. I need need this probably right on my back. Educate yeah. me. Come on. Yeah. So hemp is, it looks like you said, it looks exactly like what we see, the W. The plant is completely different because it's a cousin. You know what I mean? It's not the same plant. So the real deal has very high levels of THC, okay, which gives you a high. Okay. So I would describe it as a head high. You know, you have that, you know, kind of foggy effect. I don't know what it feels like because personally, I've never smoked before. And see, that's and, what I don't want in my life. I don't want, I don't want a high because yeah. I'm trying to just get a relief of some pain from something. Yes. So you don't feel high with a hemp plant because it's going to give you a, it's a body high, which is very different from a head high. So it's not, it's not psychoactive, which is controlling your brain. It's get, it's targeting whatever ailments you have or you know discomfort. Also, like if you're suffering from anxiety, that is what it's treating. It's not controlling your thoughts in your head at all. Can so, you can it be detected in anything? This is these are just questions I have. So yes. if you guys have questions, type your own questions, please. Yeah. So it there's never been there was I think there was something on TV recently that mentioned that a lady was like taking CBD oil and they told her that she wouldn't she ended up testing positive for i'm like, sorry they're typing me in the back yeah. stage. no i don't know some of these words i never would have even said anyway but they gave me a whole paragraph of words to stay away from <laughs> okay and then they said but you can say the word marijuana or okay. cbd okay so we'll say marijuana so but they said kim do not i don't even who is mary jean i don't know these people yeah, we don't talk like mary jane is something else <laughs> i don't know what they talk about so that's what i'm saying i don't know <laughs> I don't know that stuff, so I'm not going to even say some of that stuff. Go ahead. Tell us what you're talking about, Matt. Y'all so, stop typing in the back office and le let me do this show. Okay, go ahead. Good. So the there are different levels of like the hemp plant. There are some that is within the legal ramifications, which is less than 0.3% of mm -hmm. THC. So okay. if you say, well, I don't want anything that has any traces, even at that trace, there's that's nothing. You're not going to feel high from that. If you, there's also oils that you can get that has zero percent. Oh, okay. She whatsoever. So if you're looking and you're shopping for like hemp oils and things like that, then you're going to say, "Hey, is does this have any THC in it?" Because like in the state of Georgia, they sell CBD, but they cannot have any THC on any level in any of their products there. So I have white label clients in that area. And so when they purchase things from me, we use the oil that has no traces of it at all, just because in Georgia, they don't allow it. Where in North Carolina, they allow at least 0.3%. Interesting. Okay. But it provides immediate relief. Yes. Yes. So obviously with anything, even with prescription drugs, you know, there's that 1% of people that won't, you know, respond to it. But okay. all of our products are formulated for results um, because I'm I'm a huge advocate. Is like if I'm going to make something, it's going to work and I'm not going to have people wasting their time or money. Um, and right. I know there are a lot of people that have anxiety and issues and they've been taking medications forever and they're not seeing it's not it's just a band aid. You know, wow. not, it's the CBD is a life changer when you when you purchase the products from a great company mm -hmm. and you are you are being honest with what it is that you're right. trying to treat. Um, because some people are like, oh, well, I just need it for this. And it's like, okay, well, how bad is your anxiety? Or how bad is that pain in your ankle? And they're like, oh, it's just a little, it's like if you have high levels of anxiety, then just like prescription drugs, if you broke your leg, you're not going to take a Tylenol. You need the higher strength. Right, 800 um, milligrams, you need some more. 
the education on how to purchase it, I think that's what has been missing. A lot of people with CBD, I found, and even in talking to customers on our website, we have a take the quiz. And that's for me to kind of intercept people who have questions. Okay. And we, I can steer them in the right way of what they need and what they what I recommend for them. Right. To purchase. Because people buy what they can afford. You know, especially when it's a when they're looking at it as somewhat of a luxury. Right. You know? And so it's not you can't if you want results, you sometimes what you can afford isn't going to give you the results. So then people are walking away with a bad taste in their mouth about CBD because wow. they bought something that they can afford versus to treat the debilitating anxiety that they have. A That's thousand interesting. Grams isn't going to work for you. Sis, wow. Well, some studio. Thousand. Look at <laughs> right, right, right. You need an intense version of it. Yes, so yes. Studio audience members are chiming in with questions and comments. So Michelle Stoner says, what about for migraine sufferers like myself? So I have not had any experience myself with anyone with migraines because that is the hit, the head. Um, I would recommend trying it um, just to see what the results are, but I cannot speak to it because I have not had any of my customers <laughs> who had migraines that has used CBD. Wow. That's, I'm grateful that you are saying, you're saying that from a transparency perspective versus just trying to promote or sell your products. Do you all make your own products or do you yes. have someone that does it? We're a seed to seed to shelf. So we grow it. Um, we process it and formulate. So I've been trained myself by a cosmetic formulator to make products um so i can make skincare you know the easiest which is like the cbd oils and the typical stuff that people know about bath bombs but a full full rim of from skin wash to toner to moisturizer to bath bombs and candles and all of that stuff but i'm very honest because working in the cosmetic field um i always like to set expectations the right way and i want um, I, I feel like I would rather you walk away as a customer and then to lie to you just to get a sale. And then you go tell 10 of your friends how much of a liar I am or right, you know, right. it's bad, you know? So it's like, I've had, I've worked in a place where people had to look me in my face. It's like, what do you think I need? You know, Chinsy. And I'm like, well, I think you should do this and this. And then they do it. And then they come back in and they see me. It's like, Oh, that was a bad idea. You know? So I'm very honest when it comes to dealing with customers and they say, Hey, do you think this will work for me? And I'll say, look, yes, it will. But you have to do it like this. If you don't do it like this, then it won't work. Or I'm grateful. I'm grateful that you're taking the time to explain it at that level. I think Michelle's laughing at all the different terms that I'm not allowed to say when we were going <laughs> back and forth. So that's why she said laugh out loud. She's probably like, we were whispering, we can see you guys like Yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Uh, June Griffith from New York area says hemp will work on the nerves in that specific area to relieve the pain. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's good. You want to speak to that at all? Absolutely. It does do that. So um, it attaches to the to to this your system. So it it's a cannabinoid. So it's going to attach to whatever is the eco cannabinoid system in our body. So the nerves and all of that. So that's why you feel that relaxed feeling. Um, and, you know, I have a body scrub that's great for relaxation. It helps the skin. It's better um, than Calgon, in your opinion? <laughs> well, this is not, we're not comparing it to, let's forget that. Just it's <laughs> better than so, some, you know how they say compare. Get the best sleep ever. So many people I've learned suffer from, like, they don't get any sleep. And I'm like, I'm, I work hard but when i'm it's time to go to bed i'm like i'm down that's like, another high five remember today is national high five day everybody so give yeah. somebody that you see a high five yeah. and put a five right here in yeah. the studio today <laughs> and thank you so much michelle for sharing the national holidays with us but yeah it, when i go to sleep chancy can i call you chancy too yes. <laughs> yeah like we're friends we and girl yes. hey Chinsy. so when i go to sleep as well i am out i'm like out and I don't play around. Hearing from people, one person, including my mom, was like, I wake up at two o'clock. I wake up at this. I'm like, oh, my gosh, I would be I wouldn't be able to get anything done because without sleep, I'm not productive. I'm angry. Um, I'll probably get sick eventually. Um, right. Anytime I've ever caught a cold, it's because I've lost sleep. 
And that was, I'm like, listen, so many people during COVID didn't sleep because they spent all day in the house doing nothing. And so when it's time to go to bed, they weren't, they are, they've already rested all day, right? all day. That's all why day. I did this show. I did this show when I started with COVID mm-hmm. because I was like, how can I sit in the house all day? And I, I like to talk to people. I like to hug and, and see my, my guests. And I'm like, Hey, we talking and enjoying ourselves. And now I'm just like this. <laughs> Looking around, uh, talking. Uh, uh, uh. uh. Where I had to do the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So a lot of the products, one one in particular is the body scrub. And again, I, I created this product for the skin, and also didn't know it will help so much with sleep. But when I say the the first time that I used it myself, and then I gave it anytime I introduce a product, I give it to focus groups, and it was like, girl, I was asleep before I got out the tub. Yeah. So what, did you put it in the tub? And and you can, because I'm trying to visualize what you're saying. So it's a body scrub. So it's made of Himalayan salt. um, It has crude oil in it, which is an extract from CBD. Um, It's the one that has more moisture in it. So when it comes to like skin stuff, I would usually use that. It does smell earthy. So people that are looking for the W smell, it's, it, it, you can smell it slightly, but not if you're not familiar with it. Um, so you scrub it when you're in the tub, you just, just put it all, just exfoliates the skin so nicely. It has rose hip seed oil, also carrot oil, which is great for, you know, stretch marks and moisture. It's, it's so good. This your and, facial expressions that's getting me. The way you got your facial expressions yes. going, you making me feel like I'm like I'm on a mental. I do this whole stress management thing, and you got me on a mental vacation over here. And I never <laughs> would think that I would be t- even remotely getting into some mojo about this. So you're like, this is you me. have to try it. And then before you get out, the first day that I tried it, I dried off, and I was on my way to the bed, and I literally fell like I went face first. And my daughter was like, "Mom, you use that scrub?" Because she's like, she's nine, and she's like all about whenever I tell her I make something new, she's like, "Well, what does it do? And what's gonna happen?" And she's like, "Mom, are you asleep?" I still had my towel on, and I'm like, "Yes, I, I feel like my body is just like just melted away. All of my muscles, like everything, my body went to sleep." I gotta put you up here because you're being way dramatic. So it's like this is a good thing. I know, and I'm not dramatic. So my body was asleep, and then I put my head on the pillow, pillow, and I got the best sleep ever. So, 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 do a, like I'm a role. I love to role play, and I and I'm a drama person. I'm forever <laughs> trying to paint a picture for somebody. So show us, show us. Okay, I put you over there on a the big screen. You put the body scrub on, right? Now you don't put the body scrub on, and <laughs> Now you coming out of the tub, you wrapped around with your towel and you go and you fall face first. (laughs) And your daughter is like, mommy, mommy, are you okay? You like what? Girl, stop talking to me. (laughs) I just use my scrub. Girl, my body all tight over here. I don't think I ever felt like what you describe it at all. <laughs> never. Okay, let me put us back. I have never felt like what you're talking about. <laughs> okay. It, okay. It, it is a wonderful feeling. A lot of my friends who purchased, I said, your husband may be upset with you that night because ain't nothing happening after you use that scrub. <laughs> You I, like, I, I can it. laugh about CBD, <laughs> hemp, high living, nothing. No, Shannon knows. I actually have told Shannon, Mackenzie, Rachel, uh, I sent the whole company text thing out, right? Mm-hmm. To Cassandra, all of them. And Andrew, I said, listen, y'all, we already had a, we already <laughs> had a scientist and a chemist on about this. Why in the world we got a whole nother person talking about CBD? <laughs> and and I can't say the W word. And I can't say that, right? And I can't say you're going to keep on bringing somebody in the world. So to have you on has been, when I say just a tremendous joy, it's been so much fun, a lighthearted experience, (laughs) very educational. And I'm not going to say one way or the other whether I'm going to try to. You're you're getting some. (laughs) But when I do try, (laughs) if I try it, I'll tell y'all what what my outcome was. the body scrub and then I want you 
to record yourself live. <laughs> you ain't never get me on that thing and be like this. Oh. Uh, <laughs> like, okay, see, that's what I heard. Yeah, they would love to get that footage. Oh, let's let's yeah. let's stay focused yeah. for a second. Let me see June. And June, don't text me later. I know you're gonna be like Kim. That was just too much. What was happening? I'm doing my best on here. Okay. June is on my advisory team. So she helps give me some good, good, well rounded, well grounded and rooted advice. And actually, she's also one of our online contributors. So if you ever want to contribute to the Kim Jacobs show, shout out to you, June. So I take advice from you any day. Down below, you can see how, how you can contribute to the Kim Jacobs show. In order for us to bring guests on like this, like Chinsia, like the people that you've seen come on all throughout the weeks yeah. for, for over a year daily, guess what? The show can only function with a full team of people. Mm -hmm. The only way the Kim Jacobs show can stay on the air is if you provide some level of contribution. So please make sure that you support one of the ways down below. And I even added Venmo and sure enough, guess what? June contributed through Venmo. So whatever way works for you, make sure that you contribute to the Kim Jacobs show. Let's see. Thank you so much, Michelle says. Oh, <laughs> welcome. Macklin says, hey, when is your cousin Ebony coming back on the show, Kim? Well, I, t I tagged her to see when she's coming back on because my cousin <laughs> does makeup and oh. she's so fun as well. Let's see. High five. I see you. I see you. Michael Jackson puts me to sleep, Michelle said. <laughs> All right. Lots of smiles and hugs and everything. Let's see. Y'all too much. Yes, Michelle. <laughs> it's Chancia over here. We vibing well. Huh? <laughs> wow. I need that. So Kimberly, in order for you to get that, you can go to highliving.com. Make sure you guys sit, tell her that the Kim Jacobs show, if there's a comment section there, let her know that the Kim Jacobs show did send you over there. Hi, H I E living.com. And what are any closing comments that you like to say, Chinsia? Well, of course I would love to, I've enjoyed myself. Thank you so much for having me and anyone out there, you know, looking at becoming an entrepreneur, um, like my first tip, let's just start with what you're passionate about. Like Kim referenced, ask your friends because most of the time they can see what you're passionate about. I mean, people right. that you've known for a while, um, when you were eight and nine years old, maybe, or even, you know, as a teenager, um, they can usually pull out things. Of course, you know, make sure that the people around you are super positive because entrepreneurship is risky. And sometimes, you know, if you don't have the right group of people around right. you, they can, you know, tell you things that can make you decide, oh, well, maybe that's not a good idea. Don't doubt what you're doing. Be that's very right. confident in what you're doing. Um, because if one person can tell you this isn't a good idea, you have so many other hurdles to go through. That's right. You're not going to make it. You know, so. you already have heart hurdles just because <laughs> just because we are on this business journey that's like already risky and yes. not sure and you take a step and then it seems like oh my goodness that step was like a little bit softer than what I thought and then you take it a little further and then you go far really and you're like okay you know what so then you have failure, to regroup. You have a 50 50 chance of failure, you know, and you learn from your mistakes and even if you do start into a business and it's not successful as you would like it to be, don't, you know, don't let that sway you. It's usually just a, a, a learning lesson. Not every business is successful. So I it's love just it. having the faith to continue to move forward and find that what you're passionate about. I love the advice that you've given today and you're so fun and lighthearted and it's just, it's just a, been a total joy to have you on here today. Let me also let you all know that today's episode is sponsored as well by time to level up.com. If you have not gotten your free ticket to the time to level up summit that's taking place this weekend, mm -hmm. make sure you do. It is a free event. There are over like 20,000 people that participate in the studio audience and, and all over the world, the speakers are coming in. It's a conference that's hosted by Kern Cherry and a Time to Level Up Summit team. Let me share with you their website because I think that this has been, it's just such a powerful conference. I know I'll be in attendance this weekend. I'm actually one of the speakers as well. But outside of me, I'm, I'm, I don't know, I'm, I'm low on the totem pole compared to these. Look at these people right here. They get oh, ready to take you to the mountaintop, okay? Yes. It's time <laughs> to level up. They got level attitude, up. bling, bling on every finger. These people right here, they get ready to take you, they get ready to take you in. 
in any aspect of your business in your life. If you want to level up, go to time to level up.com. It's a free event. There's no way that this event could be free. April 16th through the 18th It's time to level up. Their mission is simple. They just want to bring people together to be their best, brightest, and the most brilliant entrepreneurs, business leaders, world changers, difference makers, three days to be able to connect, create, contribute. And here are some of the speakers. Look at all of these speakers. Okay, Karen Cherry right there in the red is the one that's put this entire conference together, her and an elite team. But you have Dr. Cheryl Wood, international speaker, all of Dr. Sonia Streibling, Maggie Cook, Eric Swanson, you name it. Look at these people. Ooh, they can go in, Dr. Stacy yeah. NC Grant, all of these people, Shea Brown, they are going to teach you a thing or two. Dr. Yolanda Jerry, the author of My Walk Past Hell, she has like over 30 authors and a new book that's mm -hmm. being released. This right here, y'all miss this right here. You're missing something special. So make sure you go to time to level up.com. Get your free ticket. Let them know that the Kim Jacobs show sent you and be in the house this 16th through the 18th. Wow. I had to say that. Yeah. And then I have to also let you guys know that. Oh, here. Michelle said, thank you so much for answering my question. Shansia, hopefully I can find some sort of relief from my horrible migraines. Yes, I would definitely, um, Michelle, go into your local um, CBD store and just ask um what their recommendations are and what like what research or how how the feedback from customers who suffer from migraine i know that they're very debilitating so i would you should probably do like a sample um of a product because i'm assuming you would need something really strong yeah um, what you're dealing with and then kind of go from there that's really good advice. Thank you so much. And Michelle, I can't wait to get your feedback on how everything worked with what uh, what Chinsia shared with you. And also one of the mothers that's on my team, she said that she wakes up very frequently. I'm looking backstage. She said, I woke up at two, four and six because of my two month old baby. Any mm -hmm. advice on situations like that for the moms that are looking that have toddlers or infants? So is she waking up because the baby's waking up the baby is having some, I don't, I'm not going to put her medical business okay. out because I'm, she didn't authorize me to, but I do know that the baby's keeping her up right now okay. in the middle of the night for some things that, that the baby has going on. So she's just wanting sleep. She's not trying to sleep through the baby, right? <laughs> no, no. Oh, oh, whoa. Whoa. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Let me go back to my views expressed. Wait a minute. I got to put that back up here. I know I try not to put that too many times. I just usually put it in the comment sections. I never, ever put it on twice in the show, but here we go. And look, the mom is back there laughing. I can see her. She's like, give it to me. What is it? Okay. The views expressed by the guests of the Kim Jacobs show don't always reflect the stance of the show. And the mom is like, she coming through the screen virtually back there. If I could pull, I should pull you in. Can I pull you in? <laughs> you want me to pull you in or leave you out? Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll leave you out. I'll leave you out. She's like, eh, no, well, I should be laughing. I went her. through that because my son used to wake up. He was a great baby, but every two hours, like clockwork. So I've been there. So I'm just trying to figure out if she's trying to sleep through it or get sleep once, you know what I mean? Be able oh, to sleep. Cause she this says the second one, it's the second one that okay. you're saying. She's not trying to sleep through. Obviously she's not trying to sleep through her baby yeah, crying. Yeah. She wants to hear when the baby's crying okay. so that she can be attentive as a mom, but then she just wants to get some good rest when, when the baby is sleeping. sleeping. Okay, great. So yes, the scrub is awesome. Also the tinctures, which is a CBD oil will work really well if she's not breastfeeding. Oh, she's breast. You're breastfeeding, aren't you? I know I'm talking as if I'm talking to somebody. Yeah, yeah. I can see her backstage, but I'm just not pulling her up. But you're breastfeeding, aren't you? Yeah. So she's breastfeeding. So no. So she can't do it. She can't. Okay. So she said, "Oh man, <laughs> she 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 done did a whole. She didn't do the high five. She did ten. No, <laughs> no way. I'm sorry. I've been there. But no, my the reason I asked is because my son used to wake up later on when he wasn't hungry and that used to just make me wake up just because i was used to waking up every two hours and so i'm like if i could just sleep through this i'll be good because he doesn't want anything you know 
She so, said that's definitely what's happening. Now you're giving a thumbs up back there, which would normally mean I'll pull you on the screen. So <laughs> pull you on the screen. Yes. Okay, because I'm like, you're doing too much back there. I can see too much activity. It's driving me nuts. Go ahead. Mackenzie. Say, I got your, own, say hours your own question. Last night. Hi, Mackenzie. Four. Hi. Oh. I got four hours of sleep last night. Yeah. No. So yeah. what's your question, Mackenzie? <laughs> Nothing. I would just love to be able to sleep, but he wakes up so much. Yeah, you do. You wake up so much. Oh and, and Shannon is back in the other bubble, and she's like, "That's called motherhood." I can see her mouth, and she's like, "You have eighteen more years." I can see all of this. Like, like all the time, night. I'll be like, "Yeah, I got so little sleep last night." She's like, "You got eighteen more years, Mackenzie." I'm like, "Thank Listen, you." I'm just trying to make it to the, through the first one. You'll be fine. It'll it'll pass soon because I I can't suggest you use anything topical or ingestible because you're breastfeeding. When you stop breastfeeding, you could definitely start using some products, but it will, listen, all this will be a blur to you yeah. anyway, because even though I can recall those times, I can, I, I'm like, was I there? Because I, I didn't get, I hardly got any sleep, but now I'm making up for it. So I get my eight hours now because it's yeah, like- I would love to, I couldn't tell you the last time I got eight hours. Before <laughs> <laughs> and, and according to Shannon, you might as well get used to that mindset because yeah. that's gonna happen. Yes. So. <laughs> yes, yes. All right. Well, thank you so much for letting me pull you on, Mackenzie. Did you have any look? She yawning now. Look, she had a doctor's <laughs> appointment with her Aww. child. Hello. 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 Can I say his name? Yeah. Oh, a little <laughs> sleep breaker. Look at <laughs> All right, let me move that name out of your face over there. Give me a second. And Shannon, make sure you take a picture too. Okay, Aww. there we go. Let me move all this stuff yeah. going on in your face over here. We got to just show Remington to the world. Aww. Hi, Remington. He's like, I'm tired. Look. <laughs> yeah, and he's like, and so my mom's not the only one tired here. Let's okay. see. Hi, Remington. Hey, guy. I know you know this voice because you've been hearing it while, while in your mommy's belly. Yes. Oh, look at him. He's like, where is she? Where is she? This is your first, Mackenzie? Yeah. Would you, yeah, yeah. Would you say, Cynthia? Yes, if you were my, my only baby. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, we're glad to see you, Mackenzie. Yeah. Glad to have you yeah. pop in today. <laughs> Cynthia, thank you for answering her question. I'm going to put you, I know you have to get ready to go to your doctor's appointment, so I'm going to get ready to put you back <laughs> today. I know some of their lives. All right, everybody, listen. The final thing I'll share with you, I did see a comment that came in. And who said that? It was June. You said that you couldn't you couldn't register. She said the site is not allowing me to submit for the level up summit. So Shannon, let's make sure we check into that and let Kern know that she wasn't able to register for the summit. We'll get to, we'll get to the bottom of that and get it resolved today so that you can register June. And I'll uh, put some kind of I'll send you an inbox or something to let you know when it's cleared. Also, somebody said my boys are thirteen and eleven, and they have teenagers. Uh, any, any advice on raising teen boys? But it's a whole different show, Michelle. Michelle, like, forget, <laughs> I need to know what to do with these teens. <laughs> now, Michelle, like, I don't care what y'all talking about today. Somebody talking about these some, teenagers. Look, <laughs> Michelle's like, listen, these boys are giving me the migraine. <laughs> That's probably what she's saying. But the yeah. thing is, I have Mine four is, four boys. Experience. So you have how many? My son is just a, is 11, so he's okay. just going into, you know. So. Well, I have a son that just turned 16, and one that's um, 20, and one that's 23, and then my 12-year-old forever, and he's in heaven. But you're raising teenage boys is a whole show. We'll talk yes. about that. Let's just do a show <laughs> on raising teenage boys. Put that down, Shannon, as a topic. Raising teenage boys, I definitely will tell you my experience, <laughs> and maybe we'll have a panel of moms come on and share how we are raising these teenage boys. Yes, okay? I'll join that conversation. I need all. I need to listen in. <laughs> she said, "All right, all right, all right," but she needs some advice before the 29th. So we'll see. <laughs> all right, don't be nervous. It's gonna be okay, Michelle. Let me get off the screen, everybody. Listen, our <laughs> final episode sponsor that I do want to take a moment to tell you about is Attorney Charles Everidge and the Hunter Everidge Law Firm. And then we're going to close out the show on this commercial. So uh, make sure that I share with you that, here you go. Attorney 
Charles Everidge and Hunter, they are located in the Charlotte, North Carolina area and the Richmond, Virginia area. You can reach out to them at 704-377-9157. They primarily focus on like social security benefits and if wrongful death suits and things of that nature. Sometimes things happen and you don't know who to turn to. Well, you can reach out to this attorney's office, attorney Charles Everidge, let them know that the Kim Jacobs show sent you and find out if you have a case in a wrongful death suit and a social security disability claim or anything. He's coming on on Monday, April 19th, doing our regularly scheduled programming. He'll be on for 15 minutes on Monday, the 19th to answer any questions that you have. So if you have questions, make sure you get prepared to be here in the studio audience on Monday, April 19th, and he'll be able to talk to you more about that. And I saw my cousin pop on and she's the person that does the makeup. She says, thank you, Lord, for getting me beyond having a teenage son. Oh, like, <laughs> yeah, we're going to talk about it. You can come on and be a part of that too. But people yeah. want you to come on and do some more makeup tips, Ebony. Oh. All right. We can't talk no more on this show today. I, I we can't, <laughs> can't cram no more in. <laughs> Is there any, you know how you're on a show, Shinsia, and you're like, dog, I meant to say this. And then I got all cut up talking about I sold cigarettes when I was eight. And I couldn't <laughs> even focus. <laughs> so is there one last comment that you want to say? Um, No, I think we said everything. I'm good. I think we've covered everything. Look, we all the details. <laughs> all right. I think I've had one of the best times. It's been a lot of fun. So thank you for being on today. Tomorrow is Freestyle Friday. So make sure you tune in. We have our experts that's going to be right here in the studio audience, and they have some great tips to share with you, some great insights. So you don't want to miss tomorrow at 11 o'clock a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we'll close out on the commercial with attorney Charles Everett so that you can learn more about Hunter and Everidge Law Firm. Thank you, Chesia. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So Thank you. Fun. Thank you. Stay back there. I'll talk to you in a second. Okay. When someone has lost a loved one, they want to know what exactly happened. They want to know, is the other person going to be held responsible? And they want closure. At Hunter and Everich, we help clients that have lost a loved one move on and to do that with dignity and respect that they deserve.